our family and friends today. Amen. I'm going to turn to the hands of the pastor. Amen. He introduced the guest speaker. Amen. 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 How about that? That's the ceremony. Give him a big hand. He can really move. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. Thanks be to God for the great things that he does. It's good to see all of you here on today. Amen. Amen. I'm just grateful to God for another expression of his love. Yes, Amen. The old folks used to say, uh, it's good to be on top of the ground and not have the ground on top of you. Right. Amen. And I believe that. Let me tell you something. This morning, or yesterday, it started, the enemy attacked my body. On, Amen. My back, my neck, my knee, everything went to hurt. And I told God, I said, if you get me to the house, Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said, if you get me to the house, my back still hurt. I said, if you get me to the house, and if you let me get in the pulpit, my neck still hurt. But I said, if you let me get in the pulpit, the devil in trouble. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good, even with all the aches and pains that I have, because God let me get to the house. And since he let me get to the house, he can say, I'm going to give him go. Since he let me get in the pool pit, I'm going to give him praise. And since he gave me the activity of my limb, I want to tell him, thank you. Oh, y'all don't want praise him with me. I want to give him glory today, because God has been good to every last one of us in here. Like you don't know what you're supposed to do when you get in here. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I don't know about you, but don't sound like much joy out there. All the joy in the pool here. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you land, serve the Lord with glad. Come before his presence with singing. When I get home, send the children will have to run it down. But right now, I ain't thinking about it. Amen. To God be the glory. I said, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the great thing that he has done. Amen. Listen, listen. I don't want to prolong the time. I got, a, I got an awesome man of God. Who, who I've been knowing for some 15 plus years now. Amen. We we kind of stumbled across each other years ago under the leadership of Dr. Jeffrey Samuel Smith. Amen. He brought us together and we've been together ever since. Amen. Now his mind is much sharper than mine and he's, he's a couple of years older than me but he's got a sharp mind. Amen. But every time I'm around him my mind is sharpened. Amen. Because of the man of God that he is. And because of how he expounds upon the word of God. Now, now, okay, I don't need to tell you this. Amen. You know what you got in Pastor Lamb. Amen. Okay, I don't need to tell you this. You know what you got in Pastor Mike Lamb. Huh? Now, 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 Revelation, I don't need to tell you this. You know because you've been hearing it for some 15 plus years now. Amen. So when you stand on your feet. And receive this awesome man of God with a big right hand and an amen. And say, Pastor Michael Landry, come on and preach this word to him. Pastor Mike Landry, we need to hear you, sir.
stand before you. And I look out there, and not only that, uh, Pastor, I've seen my niece, my, my sister. I've seen my great nieces out here. May they wait. All the way out from David, Texas. Come this way. Be honest with you, and I've seen you. Janiah. That's my baby. Yeah. She's been off in uh, who she's been in training. She's in the yeah. military now. Yeah. All right now. So she had training this weekend and she made her way this way. Yeah. Going to the house of prayer. Yeah. Well, sister, it is good to be in God's house. It's exciting to be in God's house. Yeah. And the only thing that bring tears to my eyes to be in God's house. Yeah. It's another day's journey in a land. Oh 
And what happened was, this is a penitentiary letter. The last thing you expect is words of encouragement from the penitentiary. I'm the chaplain for, volunteer chaplain for 13 years there in Dayton, in the high tower unit. And none of the people in there was locked up, was giving words of encouragement to anybody on the outside. But we find out the preacher of that church right there, Deacon Cannon, was ever right. And he found out that there was some stuff that was going on that was wrong. Yeah. There was some bad teaching going on. Yeah, that's right. There were some things that was going on. The instances of the ones that came in and what Paul actually never went to this church, but he sent words of encouragement. That's right. And the biggest thing here is when you're young in the word and young in Christianity, you have a tendency to fall for anything. That's right. That's and because it, they were in this area in Asia Minor. Yeah. They were in a place where there were two things that were going on. First of all, they thought they had superiority on the knowledge. Yeah. Well, they were impressed right. Nobody else had knowledge that they did. Enough. They had knowledge in a jug and they had both hands on the cap on them. Yeah. All right. Because nobody else get that knowledge but them. Yeah. So they were the aristocrats back in the middle of the day. Paul was sitting there listening also. And they also kept saying that you have to study and praise angels. Yeah, yeah. In other words, they were yeah. putting some things in place, no, no. Now, but the old way of doing some things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Never writers got through telling that Paul, Paul got his pen out. Yeah. Reverend Cannon, he said he penned his words. Yeah. 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 I don't know about God forgave me. Uh -huh. Paul said, I am an apostle of yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. On, By the will of God hey. and tended this, I wrote yeah. to the saints and faithful brethren yeah. of Christ, which are at close Greece be unto you and uh -huh. peace from the God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The problem was he knew who Jesus was. Uh -huh. All right now. All right now. Come to you and tell you, you know who he is. Yeah, no. You fall for anything. Yeah, yeah. And the bottom line was yeah. there was no greater rascal that was that was out there, Reverend Ryan, yeah. than Paul. His name was Saul before me. And he had papers in his hand to tear out and drag out the truth. Yeah. But Sister Janiah, we find out that he was on that Damascus road. Well, and Janika, what happened was Jesus leaved him over heaven's balcony. Yes. And he pimp slapped him. Yes. And he went blind before they yes. knocked him on his back. He said, No! What would God have me to do? The bottom line here is this. The bottom line in his mind's eyes, in the name of religion, he thought he was doing the right thing. But the old woman, he made it for himself. I'm so I need you to understand. And he realized that God forgave me and my sin. Lord, yeah. And the words are out in them. And because of what I did, I need to pay you give some words. That's the mind. Yeah. And encouragement. Yes, sir. Yeah. God forgave. forgave me. Yes, he did. Uh, now that he fast followed and he told him that in verse chapter 1, verse 14, in whom we have redemption yes. through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Yes, it's power in the blood. They were making the about you got to have this knowledge and you were better than everybody else. And you start praising materialistic yes, things sir. and angels yes. and the buildings and the yes, rocks sir. and all the other different things. There was a mystical city. They were in a place right now where the east met the west. Yes. And we find that over in Asia Minor, yes, everything sir. came and got along with that. Yes. And anything was going on, get along. Yeah, yes. like when the coast got going on today in the east United States. Yes, they said, I got my knock down and ain't nobody else got this thing. Yes, but the bottom line. Is, they missed the preeminence of Jesus. That means the superiority of who Jesus is. And he realized when God took him in that Arabian desert for three years and had one on one on the job training, he found out who God and who Jesus really is. He was kind of like moving on the backside of that desert. He was watching the sheep and all of a sudden he walked up on a bush that was on fire. He said, I'm smart enough. I went to you. Be, but I've never seen anything like this. The bush is on fire, but it's not consumed. So I'm going to turn around and see what I'm looking at. And he said, and I call him by his name. He said, Moses, Moses, take the shoes. But the place where you stand is on the ground. Brother, I want you to understand, where you at in the revelation this way back in church is on the ground. Did he understand God has ordained it? God has put it in the place. And when you walk on this sacred ground, Too much credit that you so messed up he can't change you. 
messed up. But God saved me. God forgave me. That's why I call right here, he says, in whom we have redemption. And that means redemption is then brought you back. And that's sometimes hard time to get in. You got to go to the pawn shop and pawn some stuff. Oh, but when your money is right, you want the stuff back, you're going to redeem it. And then you go back and you get it. Seen a gun, he's in that one of them. They go way back in Genesis 126 when God made man in his own image. And God did all the acts of creation, the crown jewel of creation is man. Man's not a master. Now they down there and they seen it into the world. And all of a sudden, the first man did the best he could, but then sin remained into his life. He found out he was making a thing about the life. Yeah. Yeah. He's important. Yeah. And now that Paul said he's important. 
skull, cap it off, and drank their blood out of the skull. They were mean rats. That's who they was. But we find out now that the word of God was being preached to them, and some of them mean old mean rascals turned around and believed on Jesus Christ. There's somebody in here that made a little rattlesnake, and you can say, but you know it. Change your attitude and trust that God will make a way out of no way.
in your life is to be used as an example to help somebody in your circle still that don't know God is real. You can be able to tell somebody in your walk, in your talk, I know he's real. You know how I used to be. I got a sister right there telling you I'm beautiful. Can't nobody smoke more dope than I did. I got a pound of weed, sell three bags and smoke the rest. My family was first class in Paris. But then you get some mess up like me that get me out of the club drinking wine and you make me like this. And you have me in front of all you say, say the fire. Give me the Holy Ghost folks. I do understand that. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
where Jesus says, go down. Don't you let me putting up with some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Janika, you a teacher now. You gotta put up some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Kids gonna come at you. Parents gonna come at you. All kind of attitude. But the bottom line is, you understand your purpose. You understand your plan. So the bottom line is, when I'm out there raising cane making all kind of stuff, I didn't wanna put up with nothing. Not so that when you say that, Jesus told me to do you must be. You gotta be.
You're going to go through that door right there. Y'all remember this, right? Uh -huh. And I'm going to say it again anyway. Uh -huh. You go through that door, they got some steps. Uh -huh. Amen. Don't y'all fall. Because if you fall, we got insurance, but we ain't getting you nothing. <laughs> just want you to know that. If you fall, just say, oops, I almost fell. <laughs> And then when you go down and get your food, or if you decide to sit, you both walk up to sit. But if you decide not to, you walk through that other door when you're coming out, they got some more steps. Don't you fall. We got insurance and we ain't getting you nothing. So make sure you understand that. Amen. But whatever you do, don't leave us with the food. Amen. Take some food with you. If you got to take it with you, sit down and eat it however you want to do it. We got some tables back there for you. Amen. So we want you to enjoy the refreshments that we have for you. Uh, and I want to thank, Pastor, if I could, Pastor Landry. Yes, sir. I want to thank the Oak Hill family because they love Pastor Trumbull so much they didn't forget about him. And I, I ain't going to say nothing else. Amen. 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 We just going to leave it at that. I don't want nobody coming up to me. Because I'm going to say no. Alright? Now, we're going to bring Pastor Lambie back. Amen? My good friend, give the Lord a hand clap for Pastor Lambie. Thank you. 